I had two different starts on the guitar. Uh, the first time around, it was the early 60s, and I was your typical uh, post uh, post elementary school kid with a guitar in my room, and all, all the neighborhood all the neighborhood kids had guitars. We uh, we learned A minor chord, E chord, D chord, F chord, and that was enough to start a band. And anytime any one of us learned a chord, then we brought it back to the group, and that that was how I learned for a couple of years. Uh, we we played the typical rock and pop music of the era. Um, I think two or three different pickup bands. Not focused at all. This was my nondescript beginning on the guitar. In about 1967, I had what I called my more committed or my more motivated beginning. That's when I first heard the blues. I went to uh, a university-sponsored coffee house, and in the, at that coffee house was a blues man that I think, if I remember correctly, had just gotten out of prison. So the, it was the whole it was the whole package. His name was Robert Pete Williams, and he's not one of the real well-known the first-rank guys, but he was a well-known player for folks who were the connoisseurs of the blues. But it was the first time I'd sat from me to you from a player that was not only conveying that whole blues feeling, but playing the guitar in that manner with bass and melody, uh, just all really full one guitar sound coming from one person. It sounded to me like there were two people, but there he was. So I decided the blues is what I needed to do right there and then on the spot. I was lucky enough to find a friend at school that knew a few tunes and knew how to teach the style. And he taught me the basic alternating bass, and he taught me how to play the fish and blues, and then he introduced me to the music of uh, Mississippi John Hurt. So I learned a little bit of Creole Bell and a few of those. And then all of a sudden, there's this whole world that opens up with, uh, besides Mississippi John Hurt, there's Sam Chapman, and there's Robert Johnson, and Blind Blake, and the Reverend Gary Davis, and we all know who these folks were. This big blues wave crested in, oh, the later into the 60s. And then I first heard the music of the British Isles players, Martin Carthy, Davy Graham, um, John Renborn. And they were playing in alternate tunings, but not the open tunings I'd learned from the blues. They were playing in dadgad and similar tunings, and they were playing, uh, they were arranging the music of the British Isles, the traditional music of Ireland and Scotland and Wales and so on. And that, uh, that was yet another, just a huge dose of culture, and, and it was really motivational to hear this same technique that I learned being put to work on a whole other kind of music. So that, there's two big waves, the Celtic wave and the blues wave. And, and the third wave for me was when I heard uh, the music of what I call the young modernists, and they were young at this point. This is John Fahey first, and then Leo Kotke, and then I found out about Sandy Bull and Dick Rosmini and Peter Lang and Robbie Basho. And these were all people who were taking that, that material and that technique but they were writing new music that may have had a little or nothing to do with the blues in some cases. Fahey was pretty blues based but at that time and the Blind Joe Death records were very much so. But for me, it was mainly the, that they were writing new music from whatever uh, sources they chose to quote and it sounded modern to me and it sounded different from anything else I was hearing and anything else I was seeing. So when Leo picked up the 12 string and played it and, and I saw him at, at, during that period, that sort of rocked my world. That was the last, that finished me off uh, for a job in the, in the real world. And uh, I went out and got a 12 string within a week. So uh, if you fast forward, uh, I had five or six years after I saw these modernists from the, my college years in the mid early 70s. And then you forward to the late 70s, I'd been playing all of this music and buying records and buying whatever instructional materials I could and traveling and listening. And in late 70s, I realized that as good as I was getting on the guitar, which was pretty good, uh, I was pretty much an ignorant musician. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't spell a chord. I couldn't tell you what a minor 7 flat 5 was. I, couldn't, I didn't know how to explain what a major scale was. Um, and it was starting to hold me back. I realized my head was light years behind my hands. So at that point, I just, I just kind of decided that if I was going to make a career of this, or at least make a go of it, that I'd need to learn more. And so I went back to my old alma mater and, and enrolled as a theory major, learning all the piano-based um, analysis, counterpoint, ear training, sight singing, music theory. And I took a year of jazz theory, too, which was a great addition. Uh, and that carried me into the uh, very early 80s. At that point, uh, my writing just exploded. I'd been trying to write, um, writing and tossing away the results for years. Nothing ever amounted to much. I just didn't have the materials to, to take my ideas and shape them. But the theory classes gave me the materials that I needed. And uh, it, it just 
sent me sent me outwards um, from um, from the in the writing world uh, out into a whole other realm. These first two tunes I've chosen to introduce this. Uh, this video reflect kind of the earlier and later influences, but they're both in the same tuning. Uh, the first tune we heard, uh, Tap Room, is very blues-based. It has a very, uh, very classical counterpoint written against that blues melody and that sort of swingy um, jazz eighths kind of feel, but it's in a tuning I learned from a German guitarist just not that many years ago, Peter Finger. Um, and then the tune we're about to hear, uh, Hot Spot, is that same tuning with a different set of materials and a real dissonant, fast tempo and more of, more, more of jazz harmonies and uh, odd variations on the theme and um, a little more exploratory. <laughs> 